Um, yeah, so final game on Sunday, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm sure from your point of view, nothing really changes, um, you know, because I suppose it's all about, again, character building and, you know, growing for next season. Yeah, it's it's business as usual for us on Saturday. Um, we want to go put in another good performance and, you know, hopefully that puts us in the right position to get a result as well. Um We've been building a lot and, and certainly pleased in the direction that we're moving. But nonetheless, that comes with, um, you know, some difficult changes at the end of every season. So we want to make sure that we uh, finish on a high and uh, send off some some players who are very well deserved on, on a high note. I think I didn't see the game last week, but I know Willie Kirk mentioned yesterday about, um, you know, you're playing maybe a slightly different system against Everton last weekend. So... Yeah, what was the thinking behind that? And yeah, is it something that you might try again in the future? Well, we said it from the beginning um, when I got in here that we wanted to have two different systems of play that we're really quite comfortable and confident in and, and adaptable in. And the way we attack looks slightly different from the way we would defend in those systems as well. Um, so it makes us really adaptable within probably four different systems where it's actually only two in possession, two out of possession. Um, and obviously Everton pose a few challenges with their shape in a 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, and we faced that against Arsenal as well. And, um, you know, we had an opportunity from the Arsenal game going into the Everton game to really continue to adapt our style and implement a different system. And, and I've said it as well from the beginning that we need to have two different ways of playing, ways right now playing against the top half of the table. and playing against the bottom half of the table and so I think it's the key is to be adaptable um, and make sure that we're still organised in that process and just final one um, million dollar question I suppose 12 months time we sat here what do you hope that Brighton and Oval being have achieved it's a great question um, we want to be in the best position possible that we can put ourselves in the league we want to continue climbing the table um, and if you look at the results this year, obviously we've we've scored the most goals that any Brighton team has in the league, but we've also conceded the most. So we obviously want to look at that side of it, be be much more difficult to break down, focus on the resilience, out of possession, and um, and obviously in possession, making sure, like I said, we have that adaptability to play two different ways. But we would like to continue climbing the table. We want to be as competitive as possible going into this time next year. Brilliant. Thanks, Marilyn. As ever, thanks for your support this season. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dan. Likewise. Emma? <clears throat> Hi, Mel. Um, obviously, this is the first time in a while in which Brighton are able to play a game uh, uh, without sort of the threat of relegation on them. Um, I was just wondering how, if it's, there's been a different feeling around the um, around the dressing this week, if there's, if there's a bit more a pressure off sort of how, how things have been this week knowing that you have managed to do what you personally came to do and uh, get the club away from relegation yeah I think you know we took some time to appreciate and you know be grateful that we were able to secure safety prior to the last weekend um, but we still know there's business to be done and that we we want to finish on a high and we want to put in another good performance so we've tried not to put pressure on any one game in particular and I think that's what's allowed us to pick up points early on is that we've just taken things one game at a time and that will be the same stance for for Saturday against Leicester um, <clears throat> obviously the game itself will pose some challenges uh, and it'll be in interesting to see how it plays out whether it's a bit more calculated or it turns into quite a scrappy transitional game because they're obviously still vying for their position in the league. Um, so we know that the occasion that we're facing and that we'll have to prepare for that. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of looking ahead, uh, obviously, about the, we obviously heard about the players that were released um, this week or players that are going to be leaving the club this week. Uh, quite a few first team players among them. Um, how were you sort of what were your sort of your process in terms of going about the recruitment sort of like what's your first that because I imagine that with so many sort of uh, first team players leaving the club it will be something that you've already got in motion yeah of course um, you know and, and a huge thank you and appreciation to all the players leaving the club uh, because 
many of them, if not all of them, have been here over a significant amount of time and have really built the foundation for Brighton women's football at the WSL stage. And um, their impact and legacy goes far beyond it. And we hope to, to build a Brighton brand that continues to make them proud for their contributions in the beginning. Um, and, you know, the reason for the announcement this week is so that we can appreciate them and, and give them a proper send off on the weekend. Um, of course, we look at the squad and look at where we need to continue to build and grow. And it is probably a summer where we will look to, to rebuild a number of pieces um, and want to bring in high level professionals with good experiences and, and have certainly been doing some business uh, behind the scenes around uh, names and, and opportunities to bring in that type of player. So um, it will be a busy summer. I think summer is where you we really prepare ourselves to compete in the, the season ahead. So we'll have to be spot on with our recruitment. Sweet. Thanks, Mel and Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Ashley? Hi, Mel. Just wanted to get you to perhaps sum up your time as a Brighton manager now that the season is coming to a close. Yeah, it's um, it's a special club. I can tell you that. It's an uh, absolutely incredible place to be. There's obviously a lot of excitement on behalf of uh, the men's side of the club and the success they've had this season, but there's also a lot of excitement around the growth process that we have ahead for the women's department and there's so much support from everyone that I, I feel really grateful for the investment and the interest that we have both in the community and throughout the club to to make a successful entity on the women's side so yeah my time here you know it's it's been a um a project as it will continue to be and we knew the task at hand and really proud of all the staff and players for their resilience at the end of season to achieve that task and maintain our WSL status and looking forward to uh, all the hard work that's ahead of us this summer and going into the new season as we rebuild. Have you got any maybe perhaps personal favourite moments from your time so far? Yeah, I would have to say the clean sheet against West Ham uh, because that's, that's this team's first clean sheet in the year and first clean sheet I believe um, over a, a decent span of time ranging back to, to March of 2021 so those aren't easy to come by in this league and that's something that we set out as a target in the remaining fixtures in, in building a defensive identity that's difficult to break down so incredibly proud of that clean sheet to finish off the year with. And also just how would you perhaps, I know you touched on it earlier a little bit but how would you sum up the potential that Brighton Women's have got next season in the WSL? Yeah, I'll be honest, the potential is limitless at this club uh, because, you know, the the objective is to always be moving forward and to always be growing. And that's a really clear message from, you know, Tony and Paul Barber um, and the leadership from the board is that we never want to stand still. We want to be always in a position where we're asking ourselves to do a little bit better, or a little bit more in different areas um, and that we enjoy what we do around here. It's It's a very family community environment within the club um, and everyone truly does have a vested interest in each other's success so we want to just continue to make sure that we move forward and finally what do you really want to work on in this game against Leicester tomorrow something maybe areas of improvement or things that you'd really like to see from your side yeah of course I think we we looked at some situations that the Everton game presented that we weren't maybe in in other matches. For example, we were building out of the back or playing out from goal kicks uh, far more often than we'd faced in other games. And equally, in attacking transition, maybe looked to take a few too many opportunities from distance that we want to be much more clinical with our final ball and, and unbalancing the opposition as we attack into our final third. So there's lots of takeaways from the previous match that we'll be focused on. but. The one mainstay is making sure that we are gritty and organised and, and continue to be difficult to break down. Thank you, Mel. Good luck for that game tomorrow. Thank you. Harry? Hi, Mel. Just one from me. Um, how do you prepare your prayers? <laughs> Sorry. How do you prepare your prayers for a game where yes, are under so much pressure and perhaps your prayers haven't got as much to pray for? I'm just wondering how you prepared that um, sort of mentality side of the game. To be fair, they've got each other to play for. Um, there's, there's a really nice sentiment in the group this week um, of wanting to finish on a high for all the growth that we've had and the resilience that this team has shown throughout the season that 
they've really come together. Um, and, and while it's been a year of transition and, you know, a bit of a fight of a relegation scrap that they, they, they want to fight for each other still to the very end. And I think that's something that makes the group really special. So we still have a lot to play for, certainly from within.